know about relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. Yeah. When you sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Nah. But it'll get you better. You, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good. But this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was before I was me? I was you. you. Man school, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. What's up, Square Pimp Brigade? Uh, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. What's going on, Hal? You ready to rock and roll? Oh, man, I'm doing great. Uh, other than having a tough time keeping these gators down. That's the only it's, problem. It is difficult. Pimping ain't easy. What gets better with practice, though? Um... It's, I'm excited about the show. We got a special guest in the building. We're going to get right to it. Uh, L.A.? Akeem, from L.A.? I'm not from L.A. I live in L.A. But oh, you live I, in L.A.? I, yeah, I, I born in Brooklyn, grew up in Florida, live in L.A. Oh, word. Okay, give it up for Akeem Woods, y'all. Give it up for him. Yeah. Yay. Thanks for coming on, man. I appreciate this. Um, funny dude. Funny dude, dude. I watch you rock. Funny, I funny dude. That, How long you been rocking? 10 years. It'll be 11 in September. Okay. Okay. Any, yeah. any, 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 any good uh, advice, any advice, 10 year advice that you could give somebody? <laughs> no, I mean, just be authentic and be yourself and never give up and all that bullshit. That, yeah. yeah, that is, that is the podcast in general. It's good, 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 good. What's going on? Um, so uh, originally you said originally from Brooklyn. Where in Brooklyn? I, I was born in bed but I don't oh. claim, yeah, I don't claim Brooklyn because I literally lived there until I was like four. And okay. Then so my like, well, people like, I'm from Brooklyn. I'm like, no, I was there until I was four, and then yeah. we moved to Florida. All right. Yeah, but cool. those were the hard years, man. Those <laughs> yeah, those <laughs> four years were wild. <laughs> uh, what year was that when, when you were, like, how old were you? When the 90s. You were I was born in 1980. Yeah, so you still got a little hood in you. That 90s in Brooklyn and Best Stop was five. That just was, you could get a pension for four years in, in Brooklyn, you know? Yeah, I was, yeah, from 90 to 94, I was in Brooklyn. I'd seen a lot of rusty 38s with, with electrical tape on the handle in the 90s. So <laughs> it was a, a lot of that going down. The electrical um, tape, was it, was it for prints or because the it was wearing down? No, because it was an old, rusty, shitty gun uh, that it, that had bodies on it, and they would just tape it to keep the handle on it, basically, you know. So keep it from falling apart? Yeah, like uh -huh. what you got, you know, like when you get a shitty car, how the steering wheel starts to fall apart, and you wrap uh, it in. Shit. Yeah, it was really, we lost our guest. Holy shit, he disappeared. I, just, just, I just closed the window real quick because I realized it was my Yeah, I'm fucking with <laughs> just, 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 you. Yeah, um, I got a chance to see Akeem. Akeem's a funny dude, really. Please check him out. Um, funny, funny shit. How's it? How's it going in the city? How long you been in the city? I've been in back Africa. now. Oh no, no. I so I'm I'm on the road a lot. I was on the road. I toured Godfrey a lot. Okay. So after New York, we did Pittsburgh, and then now I'm back in LA. But I'll be back in New York on Friday. Okay. So I'll be there for a whole week until the until the twenty third, and then I fly to Seattle. Oh, dope. New York. Dope, yeah. dope, dope, dope. That's dope. And you, how often you do the road? How many, how many weeks of the year you do the road? I'm on the road like six months out of the year, almost wow. seven. So a wow. lot. Wow. Open. Yeah. Do you headline yourself, or you just usually? Yeah, work? yeah. I, I headline a lot. I feature a lot. I'd say like forty percent of my work is with Godfrey, and then the other sixty percent is me, like on the road headlining clubs and stuff. 
Okay, cool, cool. God, yeah. you know, Godfrey's my boy. That's my dude. I mean, it's it's a, uh, you know, I've been doing it twenty, man. But you watch that motherfucker. He make you feel like you don't know what you're doing. You hear? Yeah, yeah. I've been working with him for almost like almost like four years now. I've known him for like almost five years. I've been working with him for like three or four, and every night is a different hour. It's a different stuff. It's always different. Yeah, yeah. He has this ability. He has this ability to take really small, insignificant moments and blow them up into huge chunks of pieces and just level yeah, the room. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. Did you did you also see him with the transition, his transition of where he got really put political and stuff like that? Or was he already that when you were, you know, I when, think it might have been already that because like, yeah. like I said, we met like probably four years ago. So I think he was already he was already doing all that when I met him. Yeah. OK, cool, cool. I um, here's a, it's interesting. I was asking you if you had if you, you know, I know you read the bio of the, of the podcast and stuff, whatnot. And so initially, like this was a really kind of hetero male orientated uh, kind of podcast. And then I and and through the I mean, we've been doing this podcast for about eight, eight years. I'm coming up nine. on nine. We're year nine right now. We're in nine, right? Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's dope. Congrats, man. Yeah, and we've never missed a day. Like fucking nine never years, missed never, never missed a week. We do one a week. But um, what's interesting is um, you know, my perspective. I initially started. You know, we did a radio show with pa- with Patrice called the Black Phillips Show, and this was a the the, the yeah, iteration yeah. of the later I iteration. I listen to that all the time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you do. You do listen to Black Phillips. I'm a huge Patrice. Is one, Patrice was one of my favorite comics. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Yeah. One of my best friends. Um. Let me. I was so let me let, let's talk about that a little bit. Um, the the principles, the principles that he applied in that. I mean, you did listen to the Black Phillips show. You know, there's like 13 yeah, episodes. Yeah. OK, yeah, yeah. have you listened to them over and over again like everybody else? I've listened to him a lot. I haven't listened to him recently, but I I I listen to him a lot. I've heard, yeah. What what are some of the things that stand out? for you in listening, you know, philosophically, even even as a as a gay male, what yeah. how, what how did the you know what what was the translation? I mean, I felt like it wasn't really it was he, he was speaking so much about relationships between men and women that I never really felt like it applied to me because I'm not uh, sleeping with women, obviously. Right, right, right. But and like honestly, there's some things that he said. I'm like, I don't agree with this. But like his, he was so firm in his opinion, yeah. and he didn't waver on it so much. So I'm like, I respect the fuck out of him. Yeah, for, for for not for not backing off on even if the opinion is something that I don't agree with at all. Which most right. of the stuff I did agree with. But like even if I was like, well, that's wild. I'm like, well, shit, you backed it up with so many points, and it's so funny. And it's yeah. like, well, I guess. What did you? What did you some not? Truth to it. What did you not agree with him on? Uh, I see the thing. He had this 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 um he always had this really strong view of of oh I, I mean this is my assumption based on no no no, no, no that's, that's what I'm asking you. Yeah, but he always seemed to have this very like the gender roles are really set in stone. OK. And like that 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 dominant women like women needed a man to be like you needed women needed to be submissive to a man in order to to get escalated to the next level. Right. And I was I've always thought that I'm like, ah, I don't know if I 100 percent agree with that. But right. at the same time, I don't have a dog in that fight because I'm not <laughs> I'm not trying to have sex with women. So like, You're like I, well, can't, maybe. I can't see that perspective. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, what's interesting but about the, that is good. Go well, the more and more like you, you were starting to talk about the philosophies when the show started. Yeah. But the more and more we had different types of guests on the show, whether guests who had different sexual orientation, you know, uh, gay and uh, gay and lesbian and and uh, and even trans guests trans, on the gay, show. Lesbian. Yeah. Um, I mean, and we everything discovered in that it applied to everybody in a different capacity, that it was more about the dominant and submissive or really more of who's going to lead at some point. Yeah. And it, it applied to everybody. Or, that's what we found recently anyway. Yeah, I, it's a it's a funny thing because we had we had started with these kind of what you're talking about, these really, really strong gender roles. And then 
every I mean, we I think the first time we did a show was like 2006. So if you think about the, the, the progression that has happened in terms of how we perceive gender roles and the fluidity of gender roles and stuff. But there was like it's it's kind of what you say is like there was always all these points like he would make these points and he would have so much ever, you know, so many points. And it would be funny that you go, well, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I don't know that to be the case. But what I've done in the in in the interim is to kind of see where they fit. So, you know, like um, like I, you know, people will teach their kids uh, like have their kids te- learn chess as yeah. a as a way to con- conceptually see strategy and, you know, to think, you know, there's a whole bunch of things that you can learn from philosophically from playing chess. And but most kids just learn how to play chess and they don't learn the application of <laughs> of any yeah. of those things in real life because it just seems so, so um, uh, disconnected. Yeah, disconnected. Great, great word. Um, the. Um, but I've been looking for the connection in that. And what I've found to be the case of what Harry was saying is that in every relationship, there's the dominant and the submissive. The, the, the contrast of that is 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 variable. But yeah. there's always there's always a dominant aspect of do, dominant person in the relationship and always a submissive. There's never this kind of head on equal kind of I'm this, I'm that. I, I just don't find that to be the case. Do you agree with that or no? No, no. And why not? I don't agree with it. I think it's I think it, it, it is some truth to it, but I think it fluctuates. I don't think it's always the same person. Like, especially as far as like a gay relationship is like, I don't think there's always the same person who's the dominant in the situation or the same person who's the submissive. I think those roles switch constantly in some gay relationship. I mean, are, there, are, there are some gay relationship where it is that and you can clearly say that this is the I mean, straight people like to say the man in the relationship. And then this is the I mean, the both men. But like just for argument's sake, you can see right, right. which more, more masculine was more dominant or whatever. I don't, I don't even mean it in a sense of more masculine. I, I mean, that I find I find and I think this is a dynamic in. Uh, it, so I, I, I don't I guess when I say that, the, what you're taking it as in the gender role in the in the in the gender role. But if you think about any relationship that you're in, there's always a dominant and there's always a submissive, whether it's, you know, it's a friend or it's a great. I mean, yeah, yeah. You, it, there's always that element there. And even though there's in the inter, it's interchangeable at times, in, you know, situationally. But yeah. I think there's always I've always found that there's always a dominant and a submissive, even if that dominant and submissive is is slight or even if it, yeah, it doesn't it. have to be a 90, 10 percent split. It can yeah. be, you know, something where they're a little bit closer, like a 60, 40 or something. But at some point, somebody uh, somebody in the relationship has to take control. There's going to be situations where somebody has to make the decisions or somebody has to grab hold of what's going on and somebody has to defer to somebody else. And yeah, and I would even, I, I would I, even go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, it's fine. I agree. I think I agree with that. I just think it fluctuates more. I mean, I, I'm, I can only speak for gay relationships, but I think it fluctuates. I feel like it fluctuates more when there's two men or when there's two women, because then there's no there's no there's no like there's no standard of it. It's no, almost it's like, no, like expected. Like, for instance, when a man and a woman go on a date, it's expected. Right. It's the norm for the man to pay for the date, open the car door, et cetera, et cetera. Right. right, right. But like in a gay relationship, that's not it's not it's like we're both dudes or both women. So it's like I think it fluctuates more so because there's no there's no like you're supposed okay, to be. So that's, that's interesting. How does that work or how, in your experience anyway, how has that worked for you as far oh, as paying uh, for a date? My experience is if the dude if the dude if a dude asks me, he's paying. Right. If I ask a dude, I'm paying. OK, right. That's how and, I always. Well, it. Here's, it's what's interesting about whatever. that is I still agree with that. Like if yeah. a girl asks me out, she's paying. I agree with that too, but a lot yeah. of dudes, a lot of dudes don't. A lot of dudes are like, I always have to pay, and I'm like, okay, whatever. Well, and that's fine if that's what you that's what you think. But the point is, the point is, it, it, just in the dynamic of that. So I guess I guess what I'm saying is, in the dynamics of the practicality of how we perceive gender roles, which I don't even think really, it, you can't even really apply that anymore. And so this was a dilemma for me 
initially because we had been doing, you know, we had did the radio show in 2006, but we started the podcast when, Harry, 2010, 2012, 2011, maybe I think the end of 11 or something. But something in any like event, that, yeah. in any event, what happened is we, we had all of these philosophies and thing. And then when when gender became more fluid, I was trying to figure out if these things still work and I found them to still work. The difference is not necessarily so. So, you know, like traditionally, guys, would go, OK, and a woman washes the dishes and the guy. It, all these all of that kind of shit went out the window because people kind of fit in where they fit in. But I think overall, the understanding of who is the dominant person always exists in any relationship in in husbands and wives, fathers and mothers, sisters and brothers, friends and family and all that. You always have that element. And I find that when you apply what we would consider these change these principles from gender to male, female, or we change it to dominant and feminine. It still falls true because of what happens is there's always, we all have a different level of insecurity and we, and we have a different level of insecurity in a lot of different things. And so for instance, um, I have a friend of mine, he's married to his wife. He hates to paint. He's not patient. And so she, she does all of the, all the taping like whenever they tape paint some she does the tape and he does the painting because yeah. it just doesn't have, but i mean i think we fit into these modes based on what we're good at but ultimately there is a there is a dominant and a and a feminine aspect of it one that kind of carries a little more weight than the other uh, and i think depending on who the person is i think that that exists would you agree with that or no no, I agree with that. OK. All right. So I, 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 I what's interesting even about that is that my own kind of uh, like I had to back up and look at this perspectively because this was a whole world that I didn't really understand. And I had I had uh, gay male and gay female friends and trans people who would still ask me for help. And I wanted to be able to help them to to so to understand, you know, to be able to take those chess techniques and apply them to these these you know, relationships, uh, LGBT relationships as well. I had to kind of kind of decipher it and kind of see where things mess meet up. And yeah. so I, I think when you when you do that, you see that they all come true. And so you, you find that I find also the, the level of validation um is has a lot to do with who's dominant, the person that's more confident, the person that more is is more comfortable with who they are. And there's always a difference in that. Never are you going to have a relationship where both people are feel validated in the same way. Or, and and I agree into certain situations that change, especially as a comic, you deal with rejection. And, you know, I mean, like it's I always say being a comic is it, it's the insanity of being a comic is that you put yourself open for judgment every time you get on stage, every time they go give it yeah. up. Give it up for Akeem. You get on stage and now they're judging you. And from yeah. joke to I mean, if we really think about the insanity of that to pick a profession that you're being judged every moment of your uh, of your of of pursuing your art in every situation, it's really kind of we're we're out of our minds that, you know, they even put you, you know, to put that put, to put yourself in a situation where you consistently have to do that. Yeah. I agree because it's crazy. We're stupid for doing it, but here we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but here we are. And and so, but the but you find the relationships in that. Like I've there is all, that dominant and that that submissive, and is always a situation like you you find the games and stuff and the things that happen and where people find their insecurity. Like I I remember um, we had a um there was a a, a good. I wouldn't say he's a good friend, Harry. You know who I'm talking about, Wayne. Oh, boy. <laughs> but, yeah. But uh, he he you know, he, he was an older guy, dated a younger, a younger dude. And and all of a sudden, uh, this this younger dude started to date. He, he, he was stepping out on him with an older guy, with another guy. And yeah. the principles of understanding what the boundaries were, um, him just understanding what the boundaries are and 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 and, and you know, I always say relationships are really simple. Just if you understand what your non-negotiables are and then never negotiate them. Yeah. The problem being how I, people are never really honest about what those non-negotiables are. 
you know? I, th- I think, I think, and I might be biased, uh, but I think gay relationships, people, gay dudes in general, I can only speak from my experience. Yeah, yeah. They're more open about what they want because there's, there's a lot of gay relationships that are open. Like, there's a lot of gay men yeah. that are in open relationships. I know yeah. t- 20. Because yeah. this is like, they're open about, like, listen, I want to be with you forever, blah, 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 blah. But, I but sometimes I want to fuck yeah. Rick. Yeah. And they're like, okay, well, you can fuck Rick, but just tell me when you're going to go fuck Rick. And it's like, I feel like that's a thing that's very common in, in gay men relationships. I don't know if that's as common with with straight, with a straight no, relationship. No, not at all. Not no. at all. I mean, they just go out and cheat on each other. But yeah. <laughs> but it, it's as common as it is with, with in gay relationships, it's just that people are dishonest about it. Yeah. Um, but what, so here's an interesting question. What makes that not okay? Like in terms of like, what's the boundary of what's not okay? I guess you, I mean, you got to figure, I mean, when, when people who have open relationships, they have to figure that out. I so saw they probably, I mean, I know some people who are open relationships, like, okay, we can hook up, but I have to be there. Like if we, if we hook up, you have to be, both of us have to be with the fucking this dude or whatever the case may be. Right, right, right. Or some of them say, okay, you can hook up, but you guys can't care, so you can't spend the night. Or you like they, everyone. Ha- I've heard a slew of different things. Right, right. It's 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 all very ab- arbitrary, and it kind of went. It's the same yeah. thing. Like I've said that about you know when guy when when guys uh when they're with their girl and they do a threesome, and there's always yeah. this. Well, oh, you can't kiss her, or you can't this, and so what happens? So is it is it? I guess what I'm asking is it the intimacy, um in the relationship that's the no-no or is it so the physical is kind of will we fucking it's fine as long as we're fucking and it's 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 yeah. it's, it's open game but but even what you're saying is that's not even even that is is kind of very specific in in terms I, of i think what it is as far as relationship goes i think if you're if like this is what i what how it's been explained to me yeah. you want to be if as far as gay relationship you want to be number one so right. you there's certain things that you want to be able to do with your dude that other gay motherfuckers can't do. Right. So whatever you establish, whatever the fuck that is. So if, if your dude is like, okay, only I get to fuck you, but you can fuck everyone else, but I right. no one else to fuck you except for me. Right. That's right. A example. Or whatever, whatever they decide on. Or and it could be as simple as like, is. don't be going to movies and cuddling yeah, yeah, up with exactly. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah right. Don't take this motherfucker on dates. Don't. Don't right. cuddle with him, whatever. You want to go fuck this dude, you go fuck him, and then you leave and come back here. Like, right. And it works for a lot of people, because I know a lot of gay men who are in open relationships and they're very happy with whatever. I mean, they seem happy. I mean... Yeah, and yeah, it, you I, know, who knows? Exactly. But I think it's just more open, but I think it's just because I think men understand more that sex... The, yeah, that the both. Sex and got, love yeah, we got the both. Yeah, right, right, right. Well, we got you also... Part of it is also that we got the wolf... And we want to fuck like, well, you, yeah, know, they, they, yeah. you know, and so it's like, how can I do this? How can I do this and still and still get my dick wet? And so yeah, yeah. What's, what's interesting about that is it's it's almost I, I don't I almost don't think it's as as mature as it is. It's just that like you like you are in a sense, you're saying, look, this is what I want to do. And what makes me feel comfortable about doing this in the context that that I don't feel insecure. And then it could be something as simple as, oh, you oh, you you went to the movies with this motherfucker like with the young and y'all shared popcorn with them. So it, yeah. it, but it's, it, what's interesting about that, that's no different than women like, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a heterosexual relationship. Oh, you know, you you'll have women will be like, oh, you fucked her. But then you you hung out. You went on vacation with this bitch. Like, you yeah, know, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's 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 as much as we see these things as different. I, I'm even in my own thinking and somebody who grew up Brooklyn in the 90s and listening to hip hop and stuff and, and yeah. all that, that the level of that homophobia that was going on. I, I'm, I'm able to see how much it doesn't matter that those principles yeah. are still in place. It's, oh, you cheated on me, but you you love that bitch. Like you, you told that bitch you love you. You know what I'm saying? It becomes these kind of um, sidebars, almost like a, 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 a these these parameters that you've crossed but that are very arbitrary and they mean like I've, you know, plenty of times I've done threesomes where or and where the, well, don't, don't kiss that bitch. I don't want you to kiss yeah, that yeah. bitch. You yeah, know, yeah. 
And it's like you, I can eat a pussy and I can get my dick sucked, yeah. but I can't. Like it, it's it's so arbitrary. Yeah, you know? it, I mean, kissing is intimate, and I mean, as I, I guess it's like a big isn't. But like I've hooked up with dudes, <laughs> I've hooked up with dudes, and we've done a bunch of gay shit. And like, oh, I don't, I don't kiss. I'm like, oh. Oh, that's fine with me, but then I get it. I'm like, oh, okay, because because that's because for some reason kissing is gayer than sucking dick. It, it, so. Yeah, right. But it's so arbitrary. I I, I remember yeah. I was dating this uh, years ago in the fucking late '90s. I was dating this call girl, right? It was this call girl, and she had these clients, the rich clients that was fucking her. And then she yeah. got to the point and she was like, "Listen, I I um I I only want you to fuck me anally." And I was like, well, she goes, yeah, well, my, my pussy is business, but my ass is is yeah. personal. And, and you know, I, I, I like I was in my 20s, my late 20s. And I was like, whatever, you know, like yeah. you, 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 but this this kind of arbitrary idea of the fact that we take this arbitrary and we put value on this based on whatever the fuck is going on in our head. And, and somehow this yeah. becomes a standard where it's really just you have given this particular act or this particular thing an arbitrary value based on who you are, based on how you were raised and all these other things that come into play. And so somehow kissing is not, but this is, which is just yeah, really, it's weird. Yeah, it's absurd. It's almost. Dante, I think you're muted. I think he, he might have pressed the mute button. There you go. Yeah. There, there you is. go. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, we can yeah. hear you now. You're back. Yes. So the uh, you know this this kind of arbitrary level of things and and the fact and and I'm really trying to f you know it's so interesting because it I've always wanted to figure this out on the heterosexual level and now that because gender being fluid in that way it, I want to understand it the same way and so we've had how you I, I mean we've. I had a bunch of like we had a um a good friend, a good comic. I'll tell you who it is afterwards. But um yeah. was um dating this girl and literally she's a lesbian, but she was she basically was in the friend zone. Like this this chick, so this chick was hanging out with her and this and that and the other, but there was nothing really she sexual. Got friend yeah. Yeah, she I mean, got friend she zone, yeah. Found and, herself and, in the friend zone and couldn't get out of it. Yeah. And and it was like, and this girl was like and she was really into this girl. And I was saying to her, you know, going back to the idea of these non-negotiables is I said, do you like this girl? She goes, yeah, I really like I really want to have a relationship with her. And then she was like, well, I, I was like, but do you do you is the friendship um, worth not having the relationship? So I, I think you can be in a situation where you like somebody in so in such a way that being in the friendship is more painful than not. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. And and then if and I said, you have to decide what is non-negotiable that you you you're in a situation where you go, um, Yes, I enjoy your friendship, but your and your friendship is a no go if we are not intimately involved or or in some kind of relationship in some sense of way. And I think you decide whether or not that's OK or not. And it's OK that you. So so usually what you have is the other party will go. Uh, well, oh, so oh, so you don't want to be my friend if I'm not fucking you. And you could go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and honestly, that makes sense. Yeah, I've had situations like that when I was hanging with the dude. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I don't need more friends. I have a lot of friends. Right, right, right. I'm not, I'm not in a low. I'm not in a low. I, I, I need like so. It's, like, it's not stuff. It's just like, and, it, and it's annoying to be around someone that you, because then you start liking them more and more and more, and then it's like you're still in the friend zone. So right. that's more detrimental. So it's like, nah, I'd rather just not talk to you. Yeah. Then, so it's not it's not even selfish. It's just honest. Well, I mean, and I think it is. I think it is selfish, but I think there's a, it's a selfishness that you need to ex exercise when yeah. if this is, you know, one of the things that we say on the show is that you always got to put your happiness first, because if you don't, nobody is it else technically will. Technically selfish, you think? Is it? I don't, technically? I, don't think, I mean, I don't think it is because then because if you. Then you're just gonna be pining over a motherfucker that you can't have. Right. I don't. That's, I don't necessarily. That's detrimental think to your mental health, and it's de it's detrimental to you as a person. So it does. I mean, in a sense, I don't think it's selfish. I think it's more selfish to sit there and try to be friends with this motherfucker 
Right. Knowing that the whole time you're thinking about you're trying. You well, want I, think, more. I think that's I dishonest. Know. That's dishonest because you want you want more and you're, you're acting like you don't want more. But I think it is selfish. I just I don't think it's bad to be selfish. I don't think it's bad for you to think that your happiness is important to you. Um, I don't know. I just don't know if it's selfish. maybe it's just putting your preference, having well, preferences what, and it's well, what okay is, to have what preferences. Is selfishness? What yeah. is selfishness? I mean, what are we what are we defining selfishness? Let me see. As? What, what is the definition of selfishness? Selfishness. Definitely. And I understand that it has a negative connotation. I'm just yeah. saying that negative connotation <laughs> comes from this idea of the fact that you should be generous to a fault where you actually give of yourself in a way that you, but go ahead, read, read concerned, the concerned, concerned excessively or exclusively with oneself, seeking or concentrating on one's own advantage, pleasure or well-being without regard for others. See, that's the part. I, I don't I don't think that it's without regard for others. I don't, is that the yeah. only definition? Because I don't uh, think two, I go arising from concern with one's own welfare or advantage in disregard of others. Oh, so it is in, in disregard. Yeah, so See, I that's guess what right. I think it means. I think I guess you're right. implies you have to disregard. And I don't think it's selfish. I think it's it's focusing on yourself and what how it affects you. It's not that you want to hurt the other person. In fact, right. it's the opposite. You would right, like right, right to make the other person happy. But unfortunately, in the circumstances, you can't. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, either way, it is standing up for yourself and, and setting your own boundaries. I, I don't I don't think it's selfish for my end, but I know yeah, what I you mean, mean, I guess though. if you, I guess if you mean selfish in terms of, well, the definition, I can't I can't go against the definition. Yeah. The definition says it in excess, in excess of it. But I, I, I you know, I, I don't I really don't have a problem with uh deciding what makes me happy and happy and doing what right, makes yeah. me happy and not yeah. doing what you may. like. I'm not going to live my life for somebody else or for somebody else's happiness. But I always um, found it so bizarre when somebody would be like, well, let's just be friends. And it, and, and I just remember thinking, you don't want to be friends. You're yeah. a liar. Yeah. Yeah. You don't yeah, want to yeah. be. We're not going to be friends after this. It's never happened right. where yeah. we're friends. We don't send each other. We're not going to send each other texts and hang out after this. Yeah, anyone, anyone who says that, oh, right, we, it's cool for just friends. The yeah, it's, it's full of, the full of shit. You're full of shit. Because like, anyone who's friends with someone, they they always have that motive. You're, you're the only reason why you're friends with them is so you can eventually they slip up, and then now you're not friends anymore. Right, now so you you're, you're laying in the bushes oh, waiting yeah. for them to slip up so you can. Yeah. yeah. So it's this it's it's disingenuous. It's yeah, you have gonna, this desire and you're hiding. I just like this the food. idea of waiting for somebody to slip to slip in the <laughs> pussy. Like wait a minute, now that they're down, I got you. <laughs> now's my time to shine. <laughs> well, you know, the, the thing with that, even if you get that situation, which very rarely, I mean, look, let's be honest, but, you know, it's very rarely that somebody gets a, gets a pity fuck. And if you do get a pity fuck, you don't get a re, you don't get a reprieve. You don't get a re yeah. repeat on the pity fuck. You can take that one with you and keep it moving because it ain't going to happen again. I mean, unless you knock unless you knock it out of the park and then she's like or he was like, oh, OK, well, maybe this could be something. And even then you got to you got to you know, you might that might rock for a little while. But the but the reason why you don't like this person in the first place is the dynamic of that. You just don't like them that much. You don't yeah. you don't see them in that way. I mean, I, I don't you know, I, I think that men in general and I think even men with men, there's this kind of. Uh, there's this kind of unwritten understanding that sex, like you said, the sex is very separate in terms of love and sex is it's yeah. two different things because, we, you know, you understand that in general. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, I was about to say, I think some people just have a hard time realizing that those people have types, men, men women, they have types. No. And it's like people try so hard to like, like, oh, I, I can win them all. I can win this guy over. I can win right. this girl. Over. I'm like, if you're not their type. Yeah. There's nothing you can do to become their type. I'm sorry. I, I, you can like you can take the personality you want, but if you're five foot seven and her and her type is is tall, motherfuckers. Yeah, you don't be tall. So like, if that's her type, then yeah. just I guess. Move. But I don't know that I've ever been anyone's exact. Yeah, type. I don't, I'm never nobody's type either. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, so, I, I mean, some people's types does fluctuate, and you can talk your way into it. But, but a lot of people, sometimes people will have a type that's like set in stone, especially. I mean, maybe it might be gay men because gay men are shallow as fuck. 
Yeah, yeah. So, because, like, <laughs> so, like, yeah, they are. Myself included. Like, there's some other, there's some people, like, there's, like, I won't compromise for cer- certain things. I'm like, I'm just not going to have to, I'm not into that type of now, thing. Is that because, I mean, it's, I'm fascinated by, by gay guys versus lesbians because it's a completely different dynamic. And it's because it's guys, you know, it's guys yeah. going. It's a guy. Yeah. It's guy. It's another. Even if it's a gay guy, it's a guy going. I want to fuck. I want to fuck. Let's fuck. Yeah. And then you have <laughs> now you have that world with uh, the options that women ha- that straight women have. But it's the gay the gay culture where it's like guys wanting to fuck. So you have those options where you could be picky. You can be like, yeah. I'm not fucking well, I mean, anybody. I, who's it's under honestly, 60. it gets to the point where like you can fuck. As much or as little as you want. Right. Actually. You can literally <laughs> turn on Grinder and there's gay dudes within feet of you. It's and like you those, find it's like those Brazilian you want. steakhouses where you could just leave the paddle on yeah. green. Yeah. And just fuck especially, as much as you want. Yeah, and especially like, if you're in a me- metropolis. Like if you're in a fucking city, yeah. New, New York, Chicago, Boston, Atlanta, yeah. San Francisco, if you're in a big city, you Sound can like James Brown and living sex. in America. Yeah. <laughs> You can have sex with a different guy every day for months. Yeah, right. Like if you, if that's your prerogative, so it's like you can't be picky. You can't have a type because you're because go- statistically you're going to be someone else's type too. So it's like it's just yeah. a number game, really. And that's what yeah. straight women get to experience all the time is having the type of a height. Like I don't know guys that many guys at all that have a height thing with like, women. Yeah, yeah like a, a heterosexual rare. man that has a height thing. That like has a uh, height thing. No, nah, I don't women. think that's a thing for men. Yeah, no, I don't know that either. We can't we can't afford that. We can't well, afford yeah. to be like uh, she's five nine. I got to yeah, get rid of she, her. She, she's not at least five nine. I'm not fucking with her. But the but I think that's all that has to do with the options. So it's it's an interesting that's a really interesting concept that the options alone in gay relationships are create a whole nother dynamic. Yeah. Of 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 because those are options, which is interesting because, you know, like it, the the authenticity of a man in a heterosexual relationship is honestly the thing that makes him most attractive. So I, and I'm not saying that you got a guy who's, uh, you know, so out, well, you know what? I, I even that. Right. I, I mean, like even if a woman like, yo, I want to do with a six pack and a, yeah. this and a, that. I mean, when you when you're an authentic dude who who um, Jesus Christ, I'm so glad we, that doesn't appeal to that. Uh, right, that right, I could get right, past right, that because right. I wouldn't be in the fucking running. Yeah. I, I mean, mean it, if it was that. Yeah, you know, if it was about I, I having six pack abs and being yeah. in, in great shape, I, I'd be I wouldn't I'd still well, be. That, I think that's the difference. I used to have a joke about this, but I think that's the big difference between men and women is men. I think I think men tend to be. I think women are less shallow in the fact that um, you can win them over with the personality. Yeah. Women. Yeah. Like, like you're like you're oh, like it happens all the time. You'll see a bad a badass chick yeah. with a mediocre dude and it's like yeah. and he won't he might not even Why have you money to talk about like, jermaine dupri like that man yeah. well, <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying like, fucking J- like jay-z and fucking beyonce like yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. J- beyonce is a bad bitch jay-z looks like he got stung by a bunch of bees like they're <laughs> not like they're <laughs> not you couldn't even yeah. say one bee a <laughs> a bunch, bunch of a bee. Whole hive. it's he like it's not like, J- like no one thinks jay-z is hot now he has swag he's a dope-ass rapper he's He's yeah. the coolest dude on the block, but he's not sexy. But he's able to. But he's so cool. When you so say, but when you say sexy, do you mean you mean aesthetically? He doesn't maintain. Yeah, that, yeah, not, yeah, yeah. From yeah a visual traditional standpoint. Sexy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right, man. He's not traditional. He doesn't have abs. He doesn't have the perfect face. He doesn't yeah. have like good looks. He's not fucking Denzel. Yeah. But he's so smooth and he has such dope swag that he can pull someone like Beyonce because. That's just what it is. But like, now, you let me to- ask you this: If 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 Jay was was gay, do you think his swag would be able to pull other men? I think it's a good question, money. right? That is a good question. <laughs> I think I think his I think his money would. But you don't think that? OK, so I'm going to I'll tell you something that this is a interesting thing. Um. I don't think his swag would help him as much if he I don't was think gay. As much because I think that you're right. I think men are more shallow. But I'll, I'll tell you this: I, I I used to go. Patrice used to throw a barbecue, right? Yeah. And so, uh, like I was a I was a male stripper for like ten years, right? And uh, and 
that was kind of my my job before I started doing comedy. Right. Um, 60 pounds ago in 20 years. But that's a whole other yeah. thing. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, the, uh, I always say when people people always ask when 60. you when, uh, when, <laughs> all right, motherfucker, watch your mouth. Uh, and uh, he goes. Yeah, motherfucker, 60. Absolutely. <laughs> 60 would take me around 240, you piece of shit. I, was, I could hold a six pack at 240. Um, no matter what you said, I was just going to repeat it. But the um, so we used to, the Patrice used to have this barbecue. Yeah. And he had this this gay friend of it was actually Von Carlos, a friend of Von Carlos. He used to come over. So I walk in and sh and she goes, he goes, you know, Patrice was just loud and obnoxious. He was like, hey, yeah. he tells to do. Oh, what you like? What you well, see what we brought for you. Got you a big light skin nigga. Blah, 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 blah. And he goes and the guy goes, no, that's not even my type. Like he yeah. he kind of, you know, so yeah. he was playing along with it. You're saying no, no, he was he was he was absolutely serious. true, serious that he didn't. He, I was not his type. He had no, no. He was like, I don't know. That's not even my thing. Right. Thanks. Yeah. But no, thanks. And I and, yeah. and I felt the kind of Akeem, I felt the kind of way about it. You know what I mean? I was like, I mean, everyone gets in there. Yeah, I, I get that. Like, right. if you, you want to be attractive to everyone, and, even if you're not, the, even if you're not, even if you're not even on the team, you still want to be like, well, I I'm not going to lie. There's been a couple of times I walk through the village and I get hit on occasionally. I'm like, thanks, but no thanks. But it does put a. <laughs> Pep in my step. I'm like, All right. yeah, so, feels nice. so this dude was like, no, nah, no, that's definitely not my thing. And then so, the, you know, the, we we would barbecue from early and we could night late. And so later on in the night, you know, people started leaving, but it was still a good crowd of people. And me and this dude ended up in a conversation and yeah. he was we were talking and boom. And so, like, I felt kind of a way because he he I didn't forget that he yeah. said that I wasn't his type. So I was I was I was fucking I was grinding this dude. I was like, yo, blah, 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 blah. I, was, I wasn't out and out hitting on him, but I was showing my wares, my yeah. swag, my this. Da, 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 da. He would tell me about this. We were sharing. Da, 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 da. Nobody so, wants to be turned down, even if to a party you have no intention <laughs> of attending. You still want to be invited. So at the end of the night, he said, you know, we should exchange numbers and go. And I got like, nah, I'm not your type. Beat it. Right. So yeah. I, I flipped <laughs> I flipped them. And then I was like, nah, you're going to. But so it was an interesting thing for me, because even that I was like this. If you got this game, if you have this confidence, I think it even works. It, I mean, for me, it even worked yeah, with yeah. a guy who was like. You're not my type at all. You know, not at all. Yeah. I don't even think of it because I, I think that I think even though, you know, gay men may be a little more shallow and but at the yeah, I think I think here's the main difference that I want to rebuke that I I the saying that you were able to wear him down and eventually he was like, oh, let me get your number. Yeah, but that's because you guys were at a setting like a barbecue where everyone's hanging out, talking or whatever. Sure, sure, but sure. I don't think. You would like, for instance, to be able to have such a long conversation with that dude, you have to be at a setting like this. But I don't think a gay dude's gonna go on a date or go or have that long of a conversation with someone who they're not necessarily attracted to. I think women do that all the time. Women will, will be like, okay, he's not that, he's not my type, but maybe he'll take me out to dinner. And then you take her out to dinner and then you talk to her, you and all the, all the smooth shit. And then she's like, oh shit. I fuck with the dude, and then now you you're fucking a gay guy. Won't even give you that next step. That possibility. I don't think. I don't think they opening. will. I don't think they'll give well, you that. Uh -huh. Okay. Look, first of all, I came a uh, little disrespectful. The conversation wasn't that long. Wasn't that long. I'm just saying, it didn't take me that long to flip him. In fact, maybe two, six, seven minutes. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I, but, I, but let's be honest. I, I know me, and I know my. I know what my my strengths are, and I know how to commute communicate in that subtext in the subtext yeah. of what's going on and i knew and even deep down i knew that i was working the, i was i was working this motherfucker just to make sure you oh you i'm not your type let's let's see so uh, but what i mean is I, I what's interesting about that i think if we talk about on a real surface level yeah it's all surface but if you really have that like when you talk about jay and jay looking at that dude is like if you watch this dude's 
interviews, if you watch his philosophy and stuff, he's a bad motherfucker. Like he oh, is. I'm, the, not, I'm not debating that at all. Yeah, I, yeah. I couldn't agree more. I 100% agree. And I, I don't know if I, I mean, as much as men are, are like I've I've smashed chicks who I didn't find attractive just because they were so dope. Like they were just just so sweet and you know what I mean? Like just. Uh, yeah, I yeah. feel you, but you don't see that relationship. Like it's you it's rare that you'll see some ugly chick who's wifed up by this fine ass dude. Oh, like, that's that not true. Does, yeah. I can't I mean, think wait, of wait, it. Wait. It's not an ugly ass chick. Wait, wait. You said an ugly ass chick who's not <laughs> fined up with a fine dude. Uh, yeah. Ugly chick wifed up. Like for instance, if what about in, Derek Jackson? She's not that ugly, dog. Can't she's ugly. homely as shit, she's dog. Plain. She's home. That Derek Jackson is is if on paper, six pack. You know who I'm talking about, Akeem? I don't. I'm gonna look him up now. He, he was on Black Twitter where he was talking on. You gotta love your queen. I and this, and, I think and, he spells his name a fucking goofy ass way too. I forget what it was. Jackson. Uh, now I gotta. Look oh, is this up. this dude that has like a million followers or whatever? Yeah, yeah. He had a million followers, and then he got caught out there because he was he was cheating. Like he was he was telling black women, "Oh, you gotta, you know, my queen. You gotta treat your women. You gotta be your queen and all this stuff." And come to find out, he was oh, perfect example, nigga. He was cheating. So he, yeah, he was white. Up with the big bitch, but he was he was well, like, big, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, but he's got yeah. a good point. I'm not he's big. I'm just assuming. I have no yeah, idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you know, I, I don't see. Point, yeah. What do you mean? You saying what, Harry? That yeah, it, 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 he was right. He wasn't even faithful to that one. He was fucking around. Yeah. I, mean, I just don't think it's as common. Like it's very common that you'll see a busted looking dude with a bad bitch. Yeah. And it's, yeah. And right, it's right. not even on some money shit. It's just like he had that swag and that Yeah, he got the swag. Right, 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 right. Well, like yeah, I remember they did a real you'll see the inverse. They did a poll years ago, like and who women thought was like the sexiest man on TV. And it was James Gandolfini from The Sopranos <laughs> that they voted the sexiest dude because it's the gabagoo. They found that his like power and his intensity. Yeah. Sex, yeah. And so that's that. I think that's an advantage that if you if you're good if you like you can get it's you're able to get women by your personality. Or like I can't tell you the amount of women that before I came I I can't I've been gay forever but I came out like five years ago. Uh, okay. when I was now and did you I date did you date women before that or no? No, I knew no never. You, you, uh, have you ever you ever are you gold time. star? Yeah, yeah. I've never slept with a woman. Wow. Okay. Wow. Extremely gay. And um, but I, 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 I extremely, yeah. extremely gay. That's what it like, says on his medical records too. It's yeah, yeah. yeah. Couldn't be gay. Like he was born. He's a, yeah. I used to do that joke. He was born and he was like, ah, get off me. Somebody yeah, wake me yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's just like, but like I would do shows because like women like sense of humor, like funny yeah, people. Yeah. Like I would do shows and women would hit on me after shows all the time. And I mean, like, very attractive women that shouldn't be hitting on me. Right, right, right. And I would just, I'd be like, oh, no, I'm busy, blah, blah, blah. Which basically means, blah, blah, I'm gay. I'm going to go watch Gopher <laughs> in my my hotel room. But I wasn't out at the time, so I just had to be like, oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm tired or whatever excuse I'd make up so I don't have to hang out with these women. But, like, people hit, hit like, all the time. Really? So right. I can't imagine, so, like, that. And so comics, like, if you're funny and you, if you go on stage and you do well and you're not having sex afterwards, yeah. that's your fault. Like, you're yeah. actually not <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it's I like would, they throw it at you. Yeah, yeah. I would say this though. Um, the simple fact that you were gay and you weren't interested also entices the fact makes these women more aggressive because no, they're, that's true. That's yeah, true. They're, they're so accustomed to, you, you know, somebody niggas, motherfuckers niggas being thirsty. They niggas, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your motherfuckers talk to you. Can, he's like, it's funny. I talk about this all the time. It's like a guy will talk to a woman, even his body language, like he'll the way he squares his shoulders up in front. Like, so. You know, we used to Harry and I used to talk this all the time. I would, yeah. I would always be able to bag some chick up on the on the. Um, he watched me do it I've too. Watched on, you do it many, a, many times at a bar, and the, the watch you doing it sitting on top of a mailbox. I remember that specifically. <laughs> just sit. And, and just I would talk over my shoulder, so the yeah. bad chick and I would be like, so you da 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 da, and she would go, and then after I finished saying what I'm saying, I would look forward. <laughs> But yeah. you also you also genuinely like you you don't you don't immediately your world doesn't light up when a hot chick walks in the room. You enjoy no. it. You notice it. But 
some guys like when there's a, a chick in the vicinity of the area, everything shuts down. Like I've watched it happen in green rooms and things where yeah. everybody yeah. Sh- the I've whole power shuts down and everyone's focused on this girl. I'm like, what are you guys doing? But then again, I would have done the same shit seven years ago because I didn't know any better. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's the what difference. you was going to say. Have- I came. You were going to say you've seen that as well. No, like- I've seen that happen before. Like, that's why sometimes women like I like sometimes women will, will talk will kind of heckle during my like during my show at some point. But it'll just be like, I understand. I'm like, oh, you're not used to not getting an attention because like I have a, I, when I'm on stage, I have a joke where I hit on a dude in the audience and I, I do all this back and forth thing. But it's like sometimes the woman will get in the feelings like, well, why am I not getting attention? And it's like right. that didn't work on me. I couldn't be more not interested in you. Like, right, 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 right. So you're so you the you throw you the, the tricks you do on straight men. It's like that does nothing for me. Like there's nothing that you have that I want. So it, whatever you're gonna do, have you you pouting or you being upset, or whatever, that's not gonna. No, me. well, all your all your your yeah. your secret powers. It, I am immune. I am yeah, immune yeah. to your kryptonite, which is yeah, interesting yeah. because I tell this to dudes all the time. It's it's like guys who are trying to meet girls. The, you if you if you're a straight dude and you treat a woman like like as if a gay man is hitting on you. Yeah. The, the attract like you, what you you said. They're even more aggressive. As yeah. you when you go, I'm I'm no, I'm good. Mm, I'm, yeah, yeah, you know, it becomes now so you're interesting. Right, right. Because yeah. you're because what you're basically so you know, I'm I I talk about this whole thing about the subtext of this. The subtext is that you're not worthy. Yeah. You're going what you have, all of this with the your eyelashes and this and your booty and all that. Mm, I'm not it's not it good is also human nature. It's not just women to yes, a degree. That, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's it's exactly human nature. I mean, it's a sale. Sometimes they use it as a sales technique. You go 100 sure. limited, 100 items, first 50. And then it creates some type of value where you go, oh, yeah, call, not just it's a giving call this to away. Action. Yeah. 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 If you're not just giving it away. It must be really good. It must be really important. Yeah, I I used I was talking I was talking we were talking to Vinnie Brand about this how in the in the in the early nineties you would go into comedy clubs and they would have a fishbowl full of condoms, right? You could just get a handful of condoms and because we you could get condoms so free we used to throw them at each other and blow them up and just because yeah. they were free we just didn't have you know we just, they just didn't have that value so it's interesting yeah. to me the the conceptually that you're you know. It, it, it's so if I if if I'm approached by a woman, I'm assessing her and what her value is. I'm trying to see if she's good enough where most of the time, most women are going. They're going. I'm I, every guy I ever met tells me I'm good enough. Yeah. yeah. Every guy wants to fuck me and treat me and put me on a pedestal because they all want to fuck me. That's yeah, was- the one guy who's figured out that you should just do the opposite. Yeah. I don't remember so- this. Mailbox thing though, you got. Uh, you were me. leaning. It was the Romanian chick. You might have been leaning on it, maybe not sitting on top of it. No, uh, well, I, I remember it. sitting on it. I was. <laughs> maybe you were. You know what? Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. All right, you were sitting on it, and it was the. It was. I think you had just done this this comedy lecture or something that somebody asked you to do. Oh, yeah, these yeah, yeah, new yeah. comedians, these like young open micers that you did, and then. You were back. I think this was at uh, the Lantern. Yes. Yeah, it was outside. Okay, the Lantern I remember. Completely. I remember. Never mind. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so. yeah, but that just that just talking over your shoulder, the 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 um, the subtext of that body language is uh, my life is forward. You yeah. are just peripheral. Exactly. I got enough to. Just say a little something and then I'm back. This is what's most important to me. And whereas you'll see young dudes, but when they find an attractive woman, they're like they lean over. The woman doesn't talk loud enough. They lean. What you, what'd you say? What'd you say? Yeah. They lean, they're, yeah. they're waiting on her every word. And yeah, yeah. yeah. Whereas I would go, like, look, could you speak up? I don't know what you're saying. You got to speak up. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm not I'm not even in the even in your positioning, even in your body language. It, I'm not willing to give you even the the body language of of thinking you're that. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I, I you know, it's not a technique, though. It's yeah. it's kind of a comes from a confidence that I know that my intention is always to bring value to people's lives, friends, family, 
um, women, men, you know, other comics. I'm always trying to do that anyway. And yeah. being that way, I know that that's what I bring to the table in terms of offer. And so you you got to be worthy of it because I know what I'm and, and the confidence of that, which is kind of that Jay-Z swag. Like yeah. he knows he's a bad motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah. I, I used, oh, I'm sure he was always like that. Like before he was Jay Z, he was probably still had the same mentality, yeah. which is why he got as successful as he is. Yeah, I just watched this video. I just watched this thing off of Drink Champs where Cameron was talking about the first time he recorded with Jay Z. Um, they put him in the booth. He he sat in the booth for six months, six not six for six minutes. Yeah, just let me hear the beat, listen to the beat, for, and then he spit a record. Just to, from beginning and hooks and everything, just bang, 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 bang. Like he said, he was. Yeah. I never seen a guy do that. And um, we gotta, um, we're gonna go behind the scenes. Can you hang out for a little bit? We're gonna do some listener mail and some stuff. Yeah, and yeah. Should, um, let me. What do you got going on? Anything that you want to plug? And your social media? Uh, what is this? When is this dropping? Uh, uh, two weeks from now. Two weeks. Uh, everything just everything at a next week actually now. next Tuesday. Sorry. Okay, everything at AkeemWoods.com, Instagram, AkeemWoods. Um, we're doing Ontario Improv with Godfrey, August. Uh, I don't even know the dates, but just yeah. all, <laughs> it's on. We're doing Ontario Improv and Cobbs in um, San Francisco. Oh. All the information's on AkeemWoods.com. That has my Instagram, Facebook, and tour dates. Uh, preach, man, dope, dope. Harry, talk to me. Uh, go to all my stuff uh, uh, at Harry Turjanian. Uh, at Harry Turjanian is my social media. And then just check us out on uh, YouTube, the Man School 202 page on YouTube. Uh, again, let me just shout out Andre D. Thompson, all his social media. We don't forget him. He just couldn't make it today. But um, follow him when you get a chance to check out his uh, his podcast. Uh, uh, Slash Theory. Yeah, everything on me is uh, Dante, the Dante Nero. Um, if you want one-on-one consultations, you can hit me at DanteNero.com and book some time with me. Just click on consult. Uh, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. I, I mean, I love y'all, man. Thanks for listening. Please follow us on Patreon. You, if you support us, then we can keep doing this. And, and, and thank you for letting us be creative. We are out. Man School 202 is created by Dante Nero, hosted by Dante Nero with Harry Turjanian and Andre D. Thompson, produced by Harry Turjanian, executive producers Matt Kleinschmidt, Harry Turjanian, and Dante Nero.